Welcome to All My Art and Soul. And this is going to be a 30-day art journaling practice, which is not a challenge, but an invitation to find a new positive path to ourselves, to our creativity. If you open yourself up so that art and soul journaling can be a source of renewed inspiration, stillness, clarity, peace, and even wisdom. Over the next 30 days, I will be uploading a daily affirmation video. So come and join me for 30 days of art and soul journaling. Hello again, and welcome to Affirmation Art Journaling page number 25. It is I easily step into the creative flow with unlimited ideas and inspiration. I easily step into the creative flow with unlimited ideas and inspiration. And this is a great uh, mindset to be into, um, being a creative, an art journaler, painter, whatever it is that you are creating. Um, so today's colors, uh, as I write them down, uh, turquoise blue, yellow ochre, cadmium orange hue, raw umber, ti uh, unbleached titanium, and transparent mixing white. Now I do, um, I do put a little bit of the titanium white on the palette. I don't know if I, I probably just use a little bit of it, uh, but we'll uh, just stay tuned. Watch to the end because there is something that I do very different um, with going across like my usual um, format or uh, composition, I'd like to say, not a format. And um, it's great because um, it really gets you out of doing the same thing all the time, especially if you're, if you're building awareness, like I am trying to do, and trying uh, not to do something completely different. That's not what I want to do. I want to find, and I'm still exploring my own authentic art, but it's just nice to try something new. So yes, I do. So the transparent is on the left, and the more opaque uh, white is on the right. And here are my collage choices for today. There's my inspiration. That's one of the, uh, the sort of six and a half by six and a half. Um, I guess I was allowing for some margin, but I will ha end up having to crop some of them, uh, but just like one edge. And then I want to mount them and then uh, put them in a larger, a really nice big mat. And uh, I will be offering those for sale. They will be up in my shop and on my website. I just have to title them and just finish them up. So that was my inspiration and the color because um, I love the neutral, but I no noticed in the end, there's a lot more white going on in those little pieces. Um, uh, the neutral being the mid-tone uh, and as well as the orange and the orange being the um, the shining color or the hero color. So I'm just writing down my affirmation for the day and using some of the twisty crayons and they really are a hard wax. Uh, so different from regular crayon. And uh, I had some questions about gloss medium. There's a uh, soft, there's heavy, uh, there's matte. I'm sure there's satin and there's high, and of course gloss, and it's a gel medium. So um, I'm, like I said, I'm running low. I'm getting to go to my art store tomorrow, so I can't wait. <laughs> we always love a visit to the art store. Now this time, I would thought I'd change it up even further and start with the collage pieces right from the get-go. And thinking of those quadrants uh, or maybe I started to think of the quadrants, but then my focus remained on the bottom section of this page. Um, then it sort of 
drifted and um, uh, I like to use uh, usually like to use black and white and um, I uh, I didn't get all those papers out as you can see I like also like the black with neutral so that's just some writing some stream writing it's a great also a great thing to do to make collage papers and to use words now in hindsight that nice piece would have been a really interesting at the top underneath because of the black would have created some nice shadowing effect so I have to really remember that and that piece fell apart this is a old encyclopedia and I love to go into my used bookstore and into the old the old section and you never know what they have also magazines and um, I like I'm wanting to find um, other kinds of ledger paper and I know that's been really overused in a lot of mixed media so I'm not really I'm sort of staying away from that uh, but it depends if you're using it in a really creative way uh, original authentic way I don't think there would that would be a problem so there's this beautiful neutral again and I'm still getting used to different amounts of uh, the raw umber and really loving that it's like a linen uh, adding some white just trying to just exploring now I could have surrounded this piece of paper and made a curve up which would have been really cool now that I look at it. Rather than just leaving a torn edge, could have used a crisp edge with an opposite torn edge. And here is, uh, this is, I do believe, no, this was, this was ochre. I thought I used yellow oxide. No, but I didn't. And it is such a powerful color. Putting in a little of that orange, but then desaturizing it desaturating it with saturizing desaturating it with some raw umber and getting another nice really muted um, and it it mostly stays but I end up covering that so keep following along and who knows what I'm going to do right uh, the same with you right it's just something isn't right and all of a sudden you get this idea because you saw this or you're reacting to another section of the page. So trying to put some more, uh, not wanting to go too light, but I wanted, I was going for a nice flat. Uh, I didn't want a, a nice flat background. That's what I was looking for. And experimenting with different uh, widths of this section. And I realized too, I need to experiment, experiment with a really wide midsection and more narrower tops and bottoms. So really playing a lot, getting familiar with this uh, color field sort of composition. That would have worked, actually. It really would have, but I ended up putting something else. I love to go and find old spellers or old... Um, just with lists of words or or numbers or something like that. It would be uh, um, the, the old graphics from the 50s. Uh, a lot of these books that I found are published in the 20s. And it just depends what's in there. And it's so neat to look through them. So just sort of staining that. And I do end up covering that. Initially, it was a great idea. And I think maybe subtle or even black. It just would have been this really black circle in the middle. But didn't really use enough gray when I think of it. Which was neutral with the black. It would have made some interesting mid-tones. And uh, there's another page from an old book. Um, there's the old speller pages. These pages um, aged in such a lovely old yellow, like a, more, more of a yellow tone 
than uh, the, the neutral tone, which is really cool. And this leaf has been with me, I have to think, and I have a box of them, of course. They're from a special place where, um, uh, like an old camp and um, a tree, a favorite tree that was, you know, quite a nice memory. And um, since cut down, now that would have been okay. That would have been okay too, but I, you see, I've done those, done that enough. So I was looking for something different today. Uh, this leaf, which I was thinking of symmetry, of course, and then putting one half of it on there. Um, I have it with me right now. And that heavy gloss gel has sealed it wonderfully um, because it's, it's just heavy enough. So I do put it in that lower left-hand corner and um, I don't know if any of you have used actual uh, collage from nature, flower petals, uh, grasses. I've used various uh, ferns. Um, I have it in my, this other series of work. And it, uh, in the fall, I am definitely going to collect a bunch more. And of course it has to be flattened and dried for a while in a big book. And then once you use it, oh, it's just so neat. So wondering what to do with this right hand side. Now that writing would have worked. It's so funny and it depends in your mindset. Some days you can be really, really, and you know, we're thinking we're present with our work, but the ideas, and that's why I love this affirmation. The creative flow with unlimited ideas and inspiration. Well, inspiration is there every day for me, and I hope it is with you. And um, this 30-day thing has been quite something for me to, to stick with, but now I'm on this flow, which is totally amazing. And uh, I've been, uh, it's been really, really incredible. That is a stencil girl stencil. Um, geometric shapes or lines. Um, just experiment with different searches when you go to stencil girl. And I need a whole new batch of stencils from them. Oh, I just love, love their stencils. So as I am playing around with um, the different saturation in that circle, um, here is the, the old book, this, the old spellers that I um, found uh, last week when I was at my bookstore. And um, I just know that I just saw, you know, a phone book, columns, names, repetition, um, just arbitrary stuff, but it just seems to add a certain type of relevance to... Um, just just the, not the meaning where it's from but but it's uh, just interesting pieces of human existence or our language or you know uh, like the big the bigger picture of things so I love that and I like it for its meaning and of course as an element and sort of playing with the two together is is uh, really interesting and there's the leaf so I give it a really good coat of the heavy gloss gel medium. And then I decide to, oh, gotta put that over there. And then of course I sort of glide my finger across it after just to smooth everything out. And that layer was just plenty. Um, it is coated, protected, and I noticed that um, all my other uh, leaves or petals, uh, when you use the heavy gloss gel, it, it really it really works. Um, and let me know in the comments below if you have used um, any uh, objects from nature, uh, grasses, petals, etc., in your art journaling. It's so cool. So, noticing it was a little thin, and I was going to put the circle elsewhere. 
but it just it just needed to go there. Don't ask me why. Oh, probably I didn't like that black line. It was just too much, but I know I needed a difference in value. Maybe going super light would have worked. A light blue at the end, who knows? But you see, we make a, we make a choice and we follow through with it. And, uh, you know, so here's those circles uh, that I made a whole bunch of with the little copper pipe. And this time I don't want to cut them across horizontally or in a line. I want to leave them in a pattern of six. And um, it's really cool what I do. I end up painting a different color inside the circle, circles, and which the page really needed. And as you can see, there's little specks of turquoise in and around that uh, collage circle that I just placed next to the leaf. And that's the color that, of course, which is the opposite. So I'm using uh, the complementary type of thing. Um, I think I want to experiment with other choices just to see what other interesting color combinations uh, would look good with a very simple palette. Um, most likely mixing together what's there, the ochre, the teal, and then as you can see, I don't like green. I, I don't know why, I just... It's not a color that appeals to me or resonates with me, but I love lime and other really cool things. If they're, it depends what, what they're surrounded by. So I didn't want to, I wanted something to counteract the leaf diagonally. This works, it's still a little heavy, but right now I'm just letting it dry and I'm gonna to get to it later. And I thought, nope, 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 too many of those, no. Nope. And then I sort of get stuck in this page, in not so much stuck, but pause. I think, oh, wow. Because I'm not used to the different things that I put down. Um, but you know what? Just sitting there, being present. Yes. So it needed a punch of the warm tones, of course. And that was my um, scrapbooking page that was already a very soft yellow that I uh, rolled and printed on with my brayer. And it just popped out more of it, like a melony, papaya uh, kind of yellow, which, oh, really took off in those little six in, those little six inch squares that I just show you, which was at the beginning of this video, which was the inspiration. And wow. So those really bring the turquoise to life. It just brought everything to life. And it's just, they took on a whole new direction, which I love, with still a lot of black and white. So not bad. No, not great at all. The idea of covering that busyness. Oh, see the ratios again, right? Uh, I was on the right on the right track, um, getting a little messy. <laughs> My brushes, because of the table's on a slight angle, so whenever I put them up over there on the right, just out of camera view, they always roll into the paint. So I have to remember to put them in the tray or way out of my way. So here's this beautiful, so I do end up using it because, oh, it has a little more yellow in it and I love Mm, that's interesting. Interesting. Curves. See, it's just too much, too much. I know, I know black could be a solution because there's not a, like, there's not a nice big dark shape. So I start erasing things first just to see if that is it. So I, I start with the most minimal uh, adjustment and of course we love that color and then I want to maintain those but I shrink them right down to just two lines which still are not working but that's okay so you just let that dry and then you can 
cover it again. That you don't make, have a muddy mess or whatever. Now the black's already dry, but if it was not. Okay, so now we're thinking about something in that middle. It, it's too much of a separation. And in the, actually that's not bad. Could have went with that color, with paint. Okay, how would I get that paint? That's more of a, uh, right away, uh, unbleached titanium, some white, and maybe Naples yellow because it's a soft yellow. I don't, maybe a little raw umber, but not very much. Now, whenever you're going to add a little orange to your unbleached titanium, it goes more to a pink, So, but a real neutral pink, a muted pink. So I'm really loving that. So loving that, but I love that stencil, but it's just too much busy contrast going on in the middle. Now, who's to say if I were to just join the two sections together with more of the unbleached titanium, what would have happened? But I didn't. Okay, so I'm just putting a very thin, and I just, excuse me, I just love this um, titanium mixing white. Uh, it is so thin, it is so transparent especially for a white. Okay, notice that would have looked good if I continued. So now I'm going, oh man, I gotta remember this for next time. No circles, no nothing. I know, shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? And then dealt with that whole, you never know, I might change it, I might change it, you know? You never know. So, the strip of circles across the middle. Mm. So now what do I do? Well, let's, let's add some black. <laughs> I can just imagine some of you going, ah, what is she doing? Well, you know, it was just a quick decision. My intuition said black. <laughs> Now we have stripes, we have lots of stripes. So in dealing with this, which now I wish I went au naturel there for the whole page and went super white in the middle, that would have been really cool. Yeah, I have to remember to do that. Taking away some of that, that is still a little large, so I'm just shrinking it down a bit, liking that. And then I put a little, some lines and a little black speck up there. But we're not done with this middle part. So, and believe you me, while I'm doing this square and just taking away, I'm quieting, and now I'm, I'm in the quieting down stage. So using black can quiet things down but it can also add quite an abrupt contrast if the rest of your painting is a very light color. Now that would have worked too. So, so now I'm searching for something else. Hmm, just, there's already so much orange in there, we don't need any more orange. But I go, okay, I want to deal with this. I want to emphasize the verticalness and the quadrants, the difference. Yes. So, oh, isn't that amazing? So as soon as I took that away, whew, it just, the energy changed. And I don't really scratch too much in here, but I really create an interesting texture, my usual vertical broken lines. And how far, I think I come over a little bit more because of the square at the upper top. That's where the line of the eye is. And then I go, okay, let's get rid of those. Let's quiet it down even a bit more. So now it's like this space. 
There's not a lot of black at the bottom, but I increase that in a moment to balance off this square on top of this rectilinear shape. And now you can see the balance coming out a bit better. As I add, I think it's just one black line carrying across that horizontal one that goes in behind the leaf. And now bringing down that same beautiful, sort of an antiqued color. And I leave that dry brush sort of texture and then realize, yeah, great. So a half circle, semicircle. And just bringing in some of that texture. Now all of a sudden the eye goes down. I wouldn't have minded, I had some, mus some music. Instead of those three lines with the Roman uh, numbers and the letter, the music, and which is, you know, I know we've seen this a lot, but there's the words in this, in this song that would have looked really neat right there. So you never know, I might add that. So here's the staining. Now, this isn't really staining. Now, when you're staining, you're really adding a lot of water to a very transparent um, um, acry uh, acrylic paint and you can use water or you can use the thinning agent. It's still, a. Um, I thought I would pick up some texture with the raw umber up there, but there's not enough texture to do it. So oh, then I just rubbed it out, but I think it did do a little something. Right in there, there was some blue. So now I'm going to, it just needed, seems so naked with just these colors. So just bringing out those drops. You can, it could be anything. And just keeping them in this little section. And then I look at those circles and I go, wow, why don't I do something different with those and fill them in with this blue. And I like how I only went half there. just made a very a thin blue line the thin blue line and all of a sudden it just ah oh, it makes that orange look so much more orange and the orange makes that blue look so blue turquoise and just a nice horizontal shape line just a thick line I didn't really I didn't really want to go too stripy, but that would have worked too. And then just desaturating, adding some lighter, just a few lighter ones going across and noticing the, it did dry a little darker again. The darker blue um, worked better. And then in that dark square, in the dark, dark square, there was another dark, dark something. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah, now I'm on a blue run. Here we go. No, too much. This is it. It's all we needed. There, I was looking for a piece of paper with a mixture of the neutral, the orange, a little bit of turquoise. So I found it, and that was from yesterday's palette when after I said, whoa, that's way too big. See, too, ma too many of the same shape. So, too long. Too big. Change the ratio, Michelle. Ah, oh, finally. Because then, this black space, the feeling of that black space, portal, whatever you want to call it, uh, lessened uh, because the square was too big. It covered it. Um, a little circle, like a little planet circle, would have looked good in there, too. Mm. Jeez, there's a lot of shoulda, coulda, wouldas with this page. But that's just this, the mindset I was in. And then noticing that they don't, they're not really doing much that far apart. So I put another set and look at that. All right. And some of you, uh, and I know like we, we all 
all of our pages are so unique. And see how the leaf is drying and I noticed it needed a little bit more right there. So it is cloudy, but it dries clear. And so enjoying the challenges of this page. I love it. So that's the Nickel Azo Gold, which I just brought in at the end. Uh, I using that for staining, Payne's Gray, Manganese, and here we are. All right. Oh, and I, and I left my I left the art journaling station and thought, man, I forgot the reveal. What am I doing? So I added a couple of things. There was the tiniest little piece of collage to put up in that beautiful. I don't know what color. It's just so neat. Um, and then what did I do at the bottom? Oh, I echoed some of that pattern from the upper right hand square down at the bottom uh, with that symmetrical design, uh, emphasizing this alignment. Now it's alignment here with squares this time, but I really like it. If I use another circle, I don't think it would have worked. Just thinking about it, but I can always experiment with that. Oh. Yep, just cleaning up those edges. Wow, I can't believe I'm going to be um, finishing up soon. And uh, I was on the, if you haven't uh, joined the Facebook group, there's some wonderful sharing going on today. I absolutely love all the pages that um, you were all creating. And uh, sorry, I forget your name right now. I'm just glancing at all the different work. And I really appreciate and comment at all of your work that you share. Uh, sharing is very important. It gets us out of our, you know, it just builds our confidence. And here we are. So, interesting pieces on this. I hope you enjoyed affirmation number 26. And uh, I will see you tomorrow in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.